Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network. Today we're going to do a review of my Synology DS2411 Plus running Synology's DSM 4.1 software. Uh, DSM is Disk Station Manager and it is the managing set of software for your Synology array. For those new with Synology, they make uh, pretty nice NAS boxes, network attached storage boxes for home and business. Now the numbering has thrown some people off, so to clear up the, the mystery, so the 2411 plus, you break it down, this array can hold 24 drives, it's a 12, uh, 12 drive bays in the base unit plus 12 in an expansion unit, and the 11 kind of indicates the generation that it is, so there's already a 2413 that's out, um, so the 2411 is a little bit uh, older. Um, and the plus indicates that it's the performance model, so it has you know a bit beefier CPU and memory and things like that. So that's what that means. Now let's go over some common questions that I get for this unit. The first one's around iSCSI and NFS. More specifically, can you do both at the same time to the same storage? So you can. Uh, in this case, I've got a disk group here. I fully populated the 2411 Plus with uh, 128 gig SSDs. They're all combined together in a RAID 5 group. Uh, hate it or love it, it's what I chose because I didn't want to lose space in my very small SSD drives there. Uh, I've got one volume sitting on top of that and I'm sharing out uh, that volume as carved up file level iSCSI LUNs, which means uh, that I've got a heartbeat 10 gig here and an 800 gig VM iSCSI line here. So I'm sharing that out using iSCSI. Uh, it can also do NFS at the exact same time. So if I go into NFS, the service, you can see it's enabled. So I've got iSCSI LUNs and NFS. And if I go to shared folders, I can very easily create a shared folder. We'll call it wall network, no space. It's going to ask me for some privileges. This is for Windows and the like. We don't really care. Uh, so I can set NFS privileges right here so we can create a uh, all hosts have admin access probably not the best thing to do but there you go and it works just fine and uh, you'll notice if I go back into it um, oops, if I go back into the NFS privileges it also tells me how to mount this to my ESXi host um, however if I open this folder I'm not going to see any of the iSCSI files in there so uh, while you can share the disks with NFS and iSCSI, you won't see the same thing in both. Uh, but you can do both protocols, and that's typically what people want to do, is play with both protocols in one array. Uh, and it doesn't matter, this is a 2411+, plus, I believe. Even my 411 uh, can do the same thing, which is a 4-drive bay, uh, bay array. So that's that. Uh, the other one, if you see on your screen, the VMware VAI support, people ask, uh, can I use VAI support? Absolutely. Uh, with a regular files iSCSI LUN, you can. Uh, in fact, I recommend it. If you're using vSphere 5.x, make sure that your iSCSI targets and LUNs are uh, s supporting VAI uh, because there was some problems prior to the more current build that, that caused some weird, uh, some performance issues when you mounted the iSCSI to the host. I believe it was related to the, the upgrade in 5.1. So. Make sure you're on the latest version of DSM and, and vSphere before you mount uh, any iSCSI or NFS to it. So those were two of the questions. The third one I get is people that want to play with um, CHAP and the like. Uh, maybe they're working on some VMware exams. Absolutely possible here with DSM. You can enable CHAP or even mutual CHAP. That's the challenge handshake authentication protocol. Basically requires a password to mount the iSCSI. It's available right there and you can very easily enable or disable basically cluster awareness on these uh, iSCSI targets where it says allow multiple sessions. Uh, if you forget to check that you may only see one connection to your iSCSI target and think that's weird. You have to check that for vSphere otherwise only one connector or only one initiator can hit the target uh, and that's very obvious here. You can see I've got all these different connections here. Um, Whereas in this one, you know, I've only got one thing connected to it. Even though I have multiple sessions, I only have one initiator touching it. So, yes, you can do all the fancy stuff, even the iSCSI name server. It's all here. You can play with it to your heart's content. You can do block-level iSCSI LUNs. You can do file-level uh, iSCSI LUNs. It, it's really, the world is your playground with this. Now, one thing I personally like 
about DSM is this particular model has two 1 gig LAN ports on it. So if I go to network and I go to my network interface, you can see I've got two physical devices bonded together using link aggregation. If I click link aggregation here, I'm using LACP to aggregate my links together, which is pretty nice. Um, and you see how easy that is, like click button. That's all you have to do. Uh, prior to this, I think I had to hit a button to say I want to use both physical devices. That was about it. Um, so it's relatively straightforward. Uh, pull lever, get banana, which is nice. Additionally, it's got this whole kitchen sink of options here, and I, I really don't use a lot of them because this is just primary storage for my vSphere environment, but I've played around with a few of these pieces, like for power, I have it set to cool mode, which basically kicks the fans up a little bit to make sure that everything stays nice and cool, but you could change that to be less noisy, not that it makes much noise anyways with SSDs in there, but, you know, wake on LAN, and you can tie it to your UPS, and you know, I've seen the beep control, it works great. When a drive fails, this thing beeps like a madman and lets you know, and so it does a great job about that. You can turn off drive hibernation. I mean, there's all sorts of features, and you can plug in uh, kind of roles to DSM. You can turn it into a media server, uh, or a torrent downloading server, or a phone server. It's ridiculous how many, you know, apps can be enabled on this thing. I don't have any of them on, so I can't show you any of them. But if that tickles your fancy, you're more than welcome to turn them on and leverage uh, the box to do that. As you can see, I've got, uh, you can't see that I've got about 20 something odd VMs on here, but you can see the fact that it's really not doing much from, this is just stock one gig of memory. It's expandable. I believe this unit can go up to three. And it's just using this dinky little amount. The rest of it's just cached. You know, it's just Linux what it does. The CPU is almost sleeping. Um, the, even the disks, you can you can see right down to each particular disk how much it's writing, how much IOPS is going through it. Um, it it's really neat what you can get out of this thing. So these are the kind of toys and bells and whistles that I enjoy. Uh, in fact, I had a, a dead SATA disk in my other array, and it was extremely easy to spot because everyone else was writing information, and he was just doing zero bytes. So I was like, okay, that's that's pretty obvious that there's something wrong there. Um, and that concludes my, my review here. Hopefully it's uh, been somewhat enjoyable and informative and uh, has cleared up some questions that I, I see pretty often. And um, hope that uh, no matter what NAS you get, that it does everything you need for your home lab. Thank you for watching. I hope that if you did find this informative, you'll click the subscribe button and visit my blog at wallnetwork.com. Thank you.